Right now on Up With Krem, heat advisories issued yet again as temperatures climb back to near 100 on a hot and hazy weekend. He really was a standout, uh, sort of across the board with whoever we talked to. After a five-month search, Spokane now has a new police chief, why he was chosen and what his goals are for the department. Plus, President Joe Biden still on the rocks this morning after several mistakes during a press conference yesterday. President Putin. President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. This morning, key moments from his first solo news conference in eight months. Up with Krim begins now. It is 6 a.m. on your Friday morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. Glad to see you, friends. Guess what, Channing? What? There are 50 days until Cougar football. <laughs> That's why we were, we were feeling the crimson today. Thomas was feeling it, too. Good morning, Thomas. And maybe Apparently you were so. wearing it because of the hot weather, too. I almost thought you were going to tell us how many days to Christmas. For a I really did, there. too. Hey, Christmas in July, too. Because <laughs> I know you, too. And I thought the red meant Christmas for a second. But, hey. 50 days till Coug football. Uh, hopefully it's not quite this hot when you're sitting on the bleachers, especially on the sunbaked side. I've been on that side of the stadium. Yeah, it can get pretty toasty. Well, the weather is going to be, well, very July-like. And heat advisories have been reissued across the inland northwest as our temperatures start to creep back into the upper 90s for the most part. Could even hit 100 degrees in a few locations. This goes through Sunday. So today, tomorrow, Sunday, another three fairly hot days. just not as extreme as the first half of this week. Pretty nice this morning at 65 degrees. The sun is out. We know those temperatures are going to climb pretty fast. And like yesterday, mid to upper 90s for most of the in the Northwest with tomorrow likely being the hottest day out of this next three day stretch. And as you wake up and head out the door this morning, we're taking a live look outside on your morning commute on up with Krem. We bring you live traffic conditions throughout the morning to let you know what's going on as you head out the door. But the good news is here in the Inland Northwest, normally at this hour, traffic is a OK. It is a Friday, though, so many people heading in and out of town. So keep that in mind if you plan on leaving. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning here on Up With Creme. Well, one thing to keep in mind during the hot temperatures is to limit your time outside. And also, it's so important to stay properly hydrated. That's right. So the CDC says for every hour that you spend outside in the heat, you really should be drinking one to two bottles of water. So that means if you're working outside or if you just have lengthy outdoor plans, prepare to drink at least eight bottles of water for an eight hour day. Hydration is so important because when we get a heat wave like this one, that increases the risk of heat exhaustion, heat illness, and even heat stroke. All of those can sneak up on even healthy adults and children. You also want to watch for signs like cramps, headaches, excessive sweat, dizziness, and losing consciousness. If you get any of these symptoms, especially fainting, you could be experiencing a heat stroke and should call 911 right away. This morning, the city of Spokane's cooling centers are still open today for people to use during this high heat. So city code says that these centers must be open once temperatures are forecasted to be at 95 degrees or higher for at least two consecutive days. The Spokane libraries are open to help people cool off, including the Central, Liberty Park, Shadle Park, Hilliard, South Hill and Indian Trail libraries. There's also more support available at the Trent Resource Center. And if you need a ride, Spokane Transit is offering free fare right now if you're heading to one of these cooling centers. We have you covered in Kootenai County. Here's a list of cooling centers in the area. The libraries in Coeur d'Alene, Rathdrum, Harrison, Hayden and Spirit Lake are open during this heat wave. You'll want to check the hours before you go. They do vary by location. And for more resources, check out the North Idaho Service Directory at the website there at the bottom of your screen. In a matter of hours today, President Joe Biden is back campaigning in Michigan. So yesterday, Biden insisted he's not ending his re-election run. That was during his first solo news conference of the year. CBS's Jared Hill shares responses from Democrats and his Republican rival. I'm determined on running. In a rare solo news conference, an energetic President Joe Biden defied calls to drop out of the 2024 race. I've got to finish this job because there's so much at stake. The president faced tough questions for an hour as he tried to tamp down concerns over his age and fitness for office. I've taken three significant and intense 
neurological exams. Can you name me somebody who's got more major piece of legislation passed in three and a half years? But last night, more House Democrats publicly called on the president to step aside. Among them, Connecticut's Jim Himes on CNN. In the next 96 hours, perhaps, is the moment to set aside the poetry, the loyalty and the love, and ask yourself a hard question, mm -hmm. which is, are you sure he's going to win? The president's performance reassured other Democrats. I think he convinced a lot of people he should stay in the race. The gaffe-prone president did make a few missteps yesterday. First, flubbing his introduction of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky at a NATO event. President Putin. President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. And later, while referring to his running mate, Vice President Kamala Harris. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she was not qualified to be President. Former President Donald Trump mocked the gaffe on social media, writing Biden, quote, has Trump derangement syndrome. Jared Hill, CBS News. Now, it is important to note that while Congressman Jim Himes called on President Biden to drop out, he also said that he will work to get the president reelected if he remains the Democratic nominee. Himes is now one of 17 congressional Democrats to publicly say that Biden should step aside. CBS News learned that many others also could be coming forward as well. Today, Washington State's Attorney General will take the Seattle Archdiocese to court. He says it is looking into whether three Catholic churches use charitable funding to cover up abuse by clergy members. Bob Ferguson's office says the church is not cooperating with their investigation into claims of abuse. A subpoena was sent to the Seattle Archdiocese last summer, but Ferguson says they have refused to cooperate. Back in May, the state then filed legal paperwork asking a judge to force the church to turn over documents. But in a statement released yesterday, the Archbishop of Seattle said the church cannot comply due to what it views as religious exemption in Washington law, writing in part, quote, doing so puts First Amendment rights and the foundational concept of separation of church and state at risk, end quote. This morning, there's a new push to increase transparency and protections when it comes to AI. In a Senate committee hearing yesterday, U.S. Senator Maria Cantwell introduced a bipartisan bill that would set new federal guidelines for detecting AI-generated content, protect journalists and content producers against AI theft, and hold violators accountable. Cantwell also highlighted that, above all, Americans deserve their privacy. So privacy is not a partisan issue. According to the Pew Research, majority of Americans across the political spectrum want more support for regulation. I believe our most important private data should not be bought or sold without our approval. And tech companies should serve the and make sure that they implement uh, these laws and help stop this kind of interference. And weather conditions today are looking quite pleasant as of this morning. Our temperatures are in the 60s and even a few spots that are still in the 50s as of this morning. So if you need to get outside, enjoy these comfortable temperatures. Let me be the first to tell you that it feels pretty nice outside. Even open your windows for an hour, at least before the sun gets a little bit higher in the sky because our temperatures will get back into the 90s this afternoon. Heat advisories did get reissued as of today. They last through Sunday, so a small little tick up temperature wise for these for this weekend 98 degrees on Saturday we got 99 this upcoming Wednesday as the long term outlook is absolutely going to remain hot for a couple more weeks of July. At 608, let's take a look at our wake up call this morning, because if you haven't had breakfast already, this one is definitely going to make you angry or hungry rather, not Carne angry. What asada in the fries? This one, that's what threw me off was the carne asada fries. Oh. So this morning is actually National French Fry Day. So we're asking you, which restaurant do you think makes the best French fries? Now, earlier this morning, Tim said that there are tiers there are. to the French fry game. So it doesn't have to be like sit down restaurant. It can be fast, fast food, food at it can, home. Yeah, whatever. Just what your favorite French fries are in general, because there's so many restaurants here. Let's be I honest. I just like all variations of potatoes. They're all I good. I like them, you know, fried, crinkled, waffled, Sweet tater potato, tots. Tater tots. Mm. All, all of them are good. So text us your favorites to 509-448-2000 or post to social media and use the hashtag up with crib. We were all very united, I think, around uh, elevating him to this role. Spokane officially has a new police chief after five months of searching. In the next five minutes, we speak to members of the search committee about why he was selected.